The hoarsely chaz two daughters that cry, gimme, 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 gimme. If you haven't ever seen the Saturday night live video of the doll that that uh, is called Needy Evie, you should watch it. It's pretty insightful. The carnal woman, the carnal man, is the selfish woman and the selfish man. The, the carnal mind can't comprehend spiritual things. The selfish mind can't comprehend spiritual things. The spiritual things are foolishness to the selfish mind. And you know, there's a lot of Christians in this world that still live to please themselves and shut up the kingdom of heaven, the voice of God in their conscience. <clears throat> it's quite the tragedy. And after I really realized the horrors of my life, I was this woman right here. I'm gonna change the picture real quick. Because any woman who can't re relate to this doesn't have too much going for her. Every woman has been this woman whose heart is bands and snares and traps, who a man has to escape from because she's carnal, selfishly minded. And she doesn't obey the voice of the spirit. She obeys the voice of getting her own needs met her own way and pleasing herself. And I, I realized when, at one point in my life, I've been calling myself a Christian, I don't know, maybe 28, 10 years, maybe nine years. But I really just lived to please me. I was my greater cause, so I, I shut up the voice of God in their conscience. It talks about that in Romans. Meanwhile, um, refusing to know God's voice in their conscience and fight for that spiritual integrity, they blew off that spiritual integrity and live to please themselves. And you know, that's what I realized my biggest demise was. And it's why most women catch men like that too, and fret and whine and complain about the selfish men that are narcissists that they catch, but they never understood their own carnality that made them blind to why they caught who they caught. So uh, after watching what happened in the Olympics today, I have some things to say about that because the woman rides the beast, right? People ride spirits. <clears throat> Fear and unbelief are the first to be cast into hell. There's a reason for that. Because selfish people that blow off God's voice in their conscience are fearful and unbelieving, right? And that's where all madness takes place and people can get harder and harder and harder and more reprobate. And if you haven't heard my testimony, I got so involved in Christian psychology, psychology in general, and all the addictive, you know, clubs. And it was just total madness. There's no sanity there. There's a, a lack of Jesus for sure. So I want to talk specifically about the scripture in Ecclesiastes, however, and I find more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands are bands, and whosoever pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. I even have a friend, I mean, every woman I know that has gotten really saved has owned that scripture, has realized she was that woman because she was selfishly motivated. If you don't hear that story coming out of a woman, run for your life. And if you're a, a woman, interested in a man that's not fighting for his own spiritual integrity and doesn't have tests for in testimonies, <laughs> run for your life because that's not somebody, a lot of people can quote scriptures, talk Bible, teach Bible, but they're not personal. And they don't have personal stories of how they overcame Satan with real life issues. So, wow, dead religion in its finest. The problem is not that we're not perfect either. The problem is that we're not teachable. Those who deny things falsely feed on the winds, the proverb says. This is only in the Aramaic too. This particular proverb is only in the Aramaic Bible. But it says, they travel thirsty, gain nothing. Feed on winds. They talk to ghosts, and they're not the Holy Ghost. They're the, they talk to spirits, but they're not the Holy Spirit. So in a land that's trodden, they travel thirsty and gain nothing. They have to lie to themselves to be perfect because that's what matters is their own self-righteousness. <clears throat> so what matters is just staying in school. The, the school of the spirit is a powerful school to be in because we can keep getting up. And um, 
that's what matters is that we keep getting up. The righteous man falls seven times, but he keeps getting up. And I've known older women, actually I've known a few now, now who died, who get sad. They got sad when they blew off the Holy Spirit and they got caught, but their trials didn't turn into testimonies. Their trials didn't turn into gold. So the issue is not being perfect. No woman's going to be perfectly interact with her husband or maybe even her friends or with a man or with her children. But the issue is, are we teachable? Is the trial profitable or do we just swing back and forth on the pendulum of pride and shame, pride and shame, pride and shame, and go around the same mountain but never learning? And again, God speaks to us in our inner being. And that's what I realized one day. You know, the only true thing that we have that can't be taken for from us, Corey Ten Boom talked about this too in her books, is our own spiritual integrity before a holy God. So if we're blowing off the voice of the Holy Ghost, we're selling our bowl of beans, our inheritance, to do our own thing our own way and please ourselves. Man, those women are the women that have to be escaped from, for sure. So uh, God's voice speaks to our inner woman, our inner man, and we can know him, that deep spiritual inclination that comes from God. Do this, don't do that. Say this, don't say that. You know, go tell, tell that person you're sorry. You know, that little voice will always compel us to do what faith and love and hope compels us to do. But selfish people don't listen to that voice. Um, so we've all bl blown off God's voice in our conscience, but godly sorrow leads to life and light. You get gold with it. When God is greater than our condemnation, he plants his words in us and we stay on the path of overcoming. Like we get more and more pregnant with his seeds remain in us. It says in First, four, in first John 4, out of their belly shall flow living, liver, living waters, living rivers of waters. You know, because in real time, in real situation, we get real words of life that heal us and deliver us. People that just study the Bible don't get real life, real stuff from the real and holy God. That's what's extremely sad about pretentious religion. So uh, God is greater than our con condemnation. And if we're learning in our trials, we'll give ourselves away and we'll give our gold away. This doesn't happen when women exalt themselves and lift up themselves in self-righteous glory because they're living for money, they're living for pleasure, they're living for their own pride of life, right? The, you know, whatever glory they can get from man. Cursed is, you know, it's it's the curse is the man that trusts the man. Also, when we seek the honor and praise that comes from man, we can't be believers. The word says that, and it's absolutely true. So we blow off the Holy Ghost. All of us have done it. But when people don't care about it, that deep leading from the Holy Spirit that's compelling us to choose the blessing so we can have life. But we choose death and ignore the voice only to sh suffer shame and sorrow. Man, there's a great scripture too that says the oppressed have no comfort, comforter, the oppressor have no comforter. And a lot of people just do that. They oppress each other spiritually. They are oppressed spiritually, but not, nobody gets any gold. So they still have no comforter. It's like beating each other up and giving each other presents, gifts, pervert judgment, right? Sad, sad way to live. A lot of people live and die like that and call it a marriage, and it's not a marriage. It's not a spiritual marriage anyway. So if we take the ingredients of our mistakes, like kind of like a cooking show and bake a dish, uh, dish with it, or, or do we just throw it behind us and act like it never happened? Pride, pride and lying are the only reason that trials don't turn into dross and not gold. So to live like little bratty kids that have to get caught is to live being used by the devil to trouble every soul we touch. There's great proverbs about that too, but I use them all the time in my videos, so <clears throat> I don't want to use them now. True Christians are willing to suffer imperfections in others. But it's really sad to watch women that travel thirsty and don't get any living water because they're selfish. They only care about <laughs> their pride. And then they crawl into a hole of shame. And, you know, 
They're not real. They're not honest. They're not open with the trials in their life. So their pride is more important than following peace and holiness. And so to the carnal, selfish woman, you know, she just doesn't care really about pleasing God. And she doesn't really care. She leaves other people bleeding by what she does. So the denial of the Holy Spirit is... Uh, is the problem that we all have. It's the only real problem we have. You know, we don't, it's it's Romans 8, walk after the flesh, walk after the spirit. All things work to good to those that walk after the spirit because they learn, right? But when we don't turn to God, the, the, the trials don't turn to gold when they could. So the prideful never clean up their mess. They leave everybody bleeding when they could comfort others with the comfort of the spirit of truth that's giving them words that are healing them and delivering them. But the selfish don't buy gold. The words of life don't heal them and deliver them. And they don't give them away either. Their smell remains the same or gets worse. There's scriptures about that too. The prideful stink to God. They smell. And it, that's in the Bible too. The carnal mind, the selfish mind, I know, I see, I bless myself my way, is the selfish mind. That is the woman that you need to escape from because she practices the cunning craftiness of men that lie in wait to deceive. She doesn't speak the truth in love and member each other. That's why, gosh, whose heart are bounds and snares and traps. And really only the people that please God can even escape these women. Um, and one of the saddest things I've seen is women who die having lived and died like fools unable to discern right from wrong or learn anything from their trials. So when God had a pile of gold bricks right beside them to build a house of wisdom and understanding and knowledge with, but they had no fight to be faithful to the Holy Spirit inside of them. Jesus would have kept giving them light to overcome, but it was all too hard, right? I went by the field of the slothful and the woman void of understanding. It was all too hard. And her brains were filled with weeds. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding in the hands, and she's pulling a gun on you for your blood, for your life. To help her, it's the virgins without oil, right? So Jesus is all willing to keep giving us light to overcome, but it's all too hard. So they call good evil and good evil good. They despise the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is Jesus making us ready for a king and a kingdom. Esther needed the Holy Spirit, the eunuch, to prepare for the wedding. So sad to reject the voice of God, the Holy Spirit in us. That deep integrity of the Holy Spirit of God that's getting us ready for a marriage. And then we never learn how to listen better day after day, after day when we hide behind bushes, right? We spend our life troubling people acting like nothing's wrong again proverbs 30 15 one of the things the earth cannot bear is the woman without oil in her lamp crying give me give me give me give me how we need the holy spirit the eunuch to prepare for the wedding and it's so sad again to revoice to reject the voice that's getting us ready for a marriage and never learning how to listen better day after day to just spend our life troubling each other when, when we could exhort one another daily while it's called a day, give each other the gold, what's healing us and delivering us. That's where there's a lot of fake fellowship in Christianity. Learning how to hear the real thing is important, you know, real fellowship, real life, real time, real situations where we're buying real gold, tried in real trials. Proverbs 30, 15 is one of the earth, one of the things the earth cannot bear. And we should be women that have been forgiven much so we can love much. So forgiving, for, uh, refusing to know God's voice in our conscience is really dangerous. It's playing with fire. We don't have a story to tell to give others hope. But staying in the school of the Spirit, staying teachable, maybe that's really what being perfect is anyway, is sharing the answers on the test so we get better, wiser, stronger. Speak the truth in love. Become members one of another so you can grow up and become the bride of Christ. Amen.